So for the next presentation, um, we have um, April Hammond from the University of Saskatchewan uh, presenting for us. And she's gonna be speaking about the effects of LED flicker on turkey hens uh, production, health and welfare uh, to 11 weeks. Take it away. Perfect. Can you see my slides? Yes, we can. Perfect. Thank you so much for the introduction. Um, my name is April Hammond, and I will be talking to you today about the effects of LED light flicker on turkey hen production, health, and welfare to 11 weeks of age. We're going to move. There we go. <laughs> so for a little bit of background, um, what is light flicker? It is the rapid change in light intensity. In light flicker research, we use the following terms, uh, flicker fusion frequency, visible flicker, and invisible flicker. Flicker fusion frequency is the frequency at which the flicker is perceived as a continuous stream of light by the viewer. Visible flicker is flicker that is consciously perceived by the viewer, and invisible flicker is flicker that cannot be consciously perceived by the viewer, but still has an unconscious impact on them. Based on previous research, it's been found that laying hens can consciously perceive flicker up to 90 hertz and unconsciously perceive flicker up to 118 to 119 hertz, uh, depending slightly on light intensity. So there is minimal research on the impacts of light flicker on birds, and the results of what there is are relatively conflicting. For example, active behaviors at 100 hertz flickering frequency differ greatly, with freezing behavior in broiler chickens increasing, uh, movement in European starlings decreasing, and jumping in European starlings increasing. Stress and fear based on basal corticosterone levels also show the variation in results of flicker work in birds. Basal corticosterone levels of European starlings raised under fluorescent lights were not impacted by flicker in one study, increased at 100 hertz flicker in another, and decreased at 100 hertz flicker in yet another study. Overall, the research that has occurred brings up um, some questions as to the actual impacts of flickering light on poultry. And as there is little to no information on flickering light in turkeys, my research will help to close the gap in that knowledge. The objective of my experiment is to look at how LED flicker impacts the general production, behaviors, stress, overall health, and welfare of turkey hens. And my overall hypothesis is that LED light flicker will have a negative impact on the behavior, production, and welfare of turkey hens as it's an adverse um, novel environmental factor. So my trial has happened once. I'm going to be running it again, hopefully in the upcoming year. And each run has three treatments. 30 hertz, uh, which both we and the birds can consciously perceive. 90 hertz, which the birds should be able to perceive, but most people shouldn't, and 195 hertz, which is well beyond the point that birds should be able to consciously or unconsciously perceive. Birds will be housed in uh, nine light tight rooms with three rooms per treatment. I have approximately 3,300 birds per trial with 364 birds per room. They are going to be fed a commercial diet ad libitum, and their temperature will be following the avogen Nicholas select curve. The lighting will also be following the avogen target curve. And the flicker itself is going to be controlled by some equipment um, that's created by Green Gauge, a lighting company out of Edinburgh, which includes the Agrolamp Symmetry Control Dimmer and the DTD controller. In terms of production data, I'll be analyzing body weight, growth rate, feed intake and feed efficiency at weeks four, eight, and 11. I'll also be collecting uniformity at week 10. And then mortalities and calls will be recorded across the whole trial with necropsy occurring for cause. For welfare parameters, behaviors will be recorded for 24 hours and then analyzed using 20 minute scan sampling to look for active, nutritive, comfort, aggressive, and exploratory behaviors. I will also be looking at heterophil to lymphocyte ratios as an indicator of stress, novel object testing, and then instances of aggressive behavior across the trial. 
For overall health, I'll be using gait scoring, foot pad lesions, feather cover, feather cleanliness, eyeball morphology, and litter quality at week 10. So lastly, I'd like to say thank you to my funders, Avigen Turkeys, Turkey Farmers of Saskatchewan, Canadian Poultry Research Council, and NSERC Alliance. Have any questions or comments? All right. Well, thank you for your presentation. I know it's uh, you're just getting started, so there's going to be more questions to come. Um, <laughs> If, if you've got any questions, please put them in the, the question and answer box. I'm just wondering, you talked about looking at uh, eyeball morphology. Um, can you expand on that a little bit for us? What kind of, what is that going to tell us? Yeah, so we um, are looking at, I'm just going to go back to the slide because I have what measures we're actually taking. So we're taking dorsoventral size, which is from the top to the bottom medial lateral, which is from side to side, and then anterior posterior, which is from the front to the back. And we know that different types of lighting treatments, so in terms of day length, um, can really influence the size and shape of uh, poultry eyeballs. So we wanted to see whether or not the flickering, if the birds are perceiving it as a different amount of time that the light is on or off, whether or not that's actually going to impact their eyeballs. Oh, very interesting. Uh, there's a question here about will you be measuring corticosterone as well? Um, so we were going to be measuring corticosterone. Um, however, we ran into some issues with our ability to get it analyzed. So we're that's part of the reason why I'm doing um, novel object testing across the entire trial rather than just once a week like once or twice kind of thing at the weeks four, eight, and 11. And then we're also doing that um, heterophil to lymphocyte ratio, which hopefully will give us a better indicator across everything, whether or not it remains a stressful um, factor for those birds. Great. Um, I, I think that is all of our questions. So with that, I'm going to thank you for your presentation.